You don't need to have the confidence to become a coach. Just start asking one question. So when they come to you and say, hey, boss, I'm not quite sure how to do this. What do you think I should do? You just practice with, well, I've got some ideas, but what do you think? Hello and welcome back to another episode of Leads to Growth. Uh, I'm your host, Chris McCoy, and uh, today we've got a return guest, which uh, I'm just so happy to see here today. Uh, today we have Lee Ashton here, y'all. And for y'all who don't know Lee, uh, Lee just wrote a book called Grow Your People, Grow Your Sales, a leader's guide to creating a growth mindset. Uh, and this book is, uh, I mean, really excellent book, Lee. I've, I've already got through. I've, I haven't read it all yet. I, I'm honest, but I've definitely gone through and skimmed it and read a couple of chapters and and as I was saying to you, well, first off, welcome to uh, Leads to Growth again. Yay! It's so lovely to be here. And honestly, Chris, I, you know, you and I both know that we could chat for hours. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. We actually have to catch ourselves, right? When we get on the call, we just start going, like, wait, 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 we should press record. This is good stuff here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So, so, so it's really, really great to with you. Ah, uh, that's fantastic. Now I am having a little uh, internet uh, difficulties here, Lay. So if we if I start losing you a little bit, I, I might have to we might have to chop and re-record again. But I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna fly with it right now, okay? Okay. Um, Super. Awesome. Well, first off, congratulations on uh, being a bestseller. Uh, we were Thank just talking about much. that game. Absolutely. Uh, it, it is it is a game, and you know, so one you got to play, and you play, and you won. And uh, and, and tell me about the other uh, nice uh, response that you got back. The short list response. Well, um, I submitted my book in the uh, business, uh, business Awards and I have been shortlisted in the sales and marketing section. How cool is that? <laughs> I'm really That's... excited about that. More than even the bestseller. Absolutely. As well, you should. And that, that's, the, that's the response of your peers, right? That's the, the acknowledgement there. And that's awesome. So Lee, tell me about what, what inspired you to write this book. I, I, I gotta, we've had some great conversations. And as I was saying to you before, you, know, you go in there and read this book and you look at it and, and I hear a lot of the same principles with different language. And, and you know, that's beautiful. Oftentimes you're like, oh, it's the same stuff. No, but that's what it gives perspective is you hear it from a different way, from a different perspective with a different language. And then that's also how you know it's authentic and not just some style, right? This is principle-based stuff that you're teaching here. And so what, what inspired you to write this book? Well, I wrote my first book 10 years ago, and okay. it was around uh, mindset for salespeople and business owners, which led to a wonderful relationship with the ISP, which is fantastic. You know, that book did what I wanted it to do. But since that time, and that, that and it's right what you say, actually, Chris, because when something is a principle and it's a fact, it just keeps, you know, it's always there at the surface somewhere. Even if people are using different terms, those things that are real and true that really help just keep coming again and again and again. So the first book was to help salespeople and business owners. And this book was really to support leaders because in the time that I've been working with organizations and working with their sales teams, I came to notice that without the development of a sales leader, sales training can often slip into a deep dark hole unless the salesperson is just naturally growth mindset who's going to take it and run with it but as you and I both know there's only like the top 10% of salespeople that will do that and it's not yes. because the others don't want to it's that they have some challenges to overcome and they need the support and coaching of the leader and you know, over the years of working with organizations, I realized that sales leaders are the least invested mm. in in terms of development because most of them have been really successful salespeople, as are, you know. And then I was promoted to a sales manager, and then 
I felt a failure for the first time in my life. I couldn't get everyone in my team to do the things that had made me successful. I couldn't, even if it made logical sense. It, and so, and you and I have had this discussion so many times, so I'm sorry that you're hearing it again, but that is what inspired me to write the book because thousands need support and organizations just expect them to know exactly how to develop that growth mindset culture just because they have it but in the the irony is but because they have it at least they don't have it a hundred percent a hundred percent and people don't know what they don't know Right. And those who do, they, 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 they've known it all along and it's subconscious. They, they, they aren't as aware of it as, as everybody else. It's, it's so true. And your book is really written like a workbook. There, there are, at the end of every chapter, there are activities, there are different things that there are processes that you can go through to, uh, to, to apply um, what you're teaching. And I think that's a really important piece for a growth mindset book, right? Cause you can't just tell them again. They have to go through the processes. So uh, are these some of the, the tools that you use uh, uh, in the sales consultancy? Well, I, that, that book is actually the kind of work that I do with sales leaders ongoing. So I know that it works because I'm constantly using it. And it evolves over time. So currently, that is what I'm doing. Even that's evolved since I wrote the book at the back end of last year, it was published. But so because neuroscience and quantum physics and quantum mechanics, you know, mindset, psychology, accelerated learning, all growth mindset, all of those things keep evolving. And so you have to keep um, current. But if you were to read my book you it's as it's not as good as being with me in a room but you get a real sense of what I would be doing with you if you were sitting in front of me and the add the extra pieces that you know I've got uh, extra documentation that you can download on my website you know there's a journal there are uh uh, grow coaching questions there are sales leadership missions you point as if you can't come up with one immediately on your own you know there's there's all these different resources so that it is very much it's, there's no point in teaching anything if somebody doesn't use it so I've tried to make it as easy for the reader to apply it in like really easy steps that's exactly what I took from it. You know, as, as um, you know, we take people through, you know, our, our programs at NASP are conditioning programs. They're, 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 they're meant to accomplish what, what, what a book would accomplish, but through daily little bites and pieces on, on, on a program. And the reason why is because most books are just written to deliver information. And, yeah. and, and that's why I really enjoyed the way that your book flowed. It, it lists the questions that you should ask and it, and it tells you what you might think in here. And it tells you how, you know, how you might go through this process and what it might feel like in those moments. And then there's a, some motivation in there to, to encourage you to move through and pass these different things. So I think it, it's a, it's a really, really well-written book. And, it, and it's a, like, as we talk about all the time, the, those in middle management, they were, they're salespeople, they're successful at influencing others, but they don't translate those influence skills into influencing people within their own work in their own business and i think this book gives that that communication it's almost like um some of the chapters i felt like you were i was going through a discovery process learning how to discover how to speak to the people i work with yeah 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 and and um i think it's really important to remember that and i think that this is a time a challenge of our times and that is that people feel that they need to fit a certain image. Mm. You know, people feel that in order to be taken seriously, they have to be X, Y, or Z, depending on what your company's X, Y, or Z is. And, you know, it's not true. Yeah. It's really not true. The more yourself you are, 
actually, the more likely you are to succeed. The more compassionate and kind you are to your team, the more you're likely to succeed. And when I say kind and compassionate, I don't mean soft. You know, they are two very different things. It's like if your child is being naughty, the kind thing to do is to tell you your child off and make them sit on the naughty step or whatever your little punishment is for that <laughs> child because step. otherwise they will not they won't get the consequences of bad behavior and know that it's wrong absolutely and being uh, kind that is the kindest thing to do and you hmm. you know it, it if one of the chapters that you read in my book was the one around tough love tough you know love. that's a yeah, that's such a kind thing to do for mm-hmm. someone. And yet sales leaders really shy away from it because they think it's unkind. And actually the most unkind thing to do is not to have a conversation. And that person just carries on in blissful ignorance and not even having an opportunity to do something about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we, we teach some uh, women and their children and uh, some parenting conversations. And, and this is exactly it. You know, and these are wealthy women uh, and young yep. presidents organization. And they, you know, they have their sons and, and their sons are spoiled. And, and, you know, they've been around, they've gotten all these different things. And now the mother's like, well, how do we make it easier? How do we help them? Well, you help them by not making it easy on them. You help them by allowing them to fail in a safe place. You help them by, by, by learning from everything that goes not the way that they intended it. And I think uh, it, it's easier not to do that. Right. It's harder to do it for, for the parent or for the coach or for the manager. It's harder for us to do it. It takes time out of our day. It takes it's it's uncomfortable, right? You have to go through this process. You have to change because you have to influence somebody else who's in a different state, which means you really got to get out of your own state. And so I think it's um I think it's a challenging thing to do. And I think it's one of those things in life that when you take the time to do it, it it's worth it. You talk about maps about uncovering and discovering uh what what the map is of this person. What stories are they telling themselves? So you can't just Fix them with your with the stuff that fixed you, right? And, yeah. and it's yeah. a very interesting process. And, and so, do you do I do you identify? Um, do you have a process for teaching people to identify maps that, that that other people's maps? And tell us a little bit about maps. What 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 are? How do you describe maps? Okay, so I uh, the way I describe it is everyone has their own unique map of the world. It's as unique as your DNA, you mm-hmm. know, and, and everything that's happened in my life from the moment I was born to this very day has created Lee Ashton's map of the world. You know, everything from the books I've read, the films I've watched, the people I've met, everything, absolutely everything um, has some influence and everyone's life is unique no two people not even siblings have the same map of the world so it's really important sales leaders you know may look at kpis and and look at outward things but how can you lead someone that you don't even know so the map is everything from like are they in a relationship Uh, have they got children what are their children's names do they have pets do they play sport what do they think about what's going on in the world right now you know don't get into politics I, I grant you that's always a bit challenging but knowing what someone's politics is is very very useful mm-hmm, absolutely you know, because you know what to say what not to say is that person a person of faith or an atheist you know everything that you can find out about that person what are their dreams and aspirations for mm-hmm. themselves for their family it makes it so much easier for you to lift them when they're down and to project them to greater heights when they need that nudge. Mm -hmm. It's, it's so true. You know, and it's, it it just comes back to that conversation that we have all the time. It's the same with influencing a customer. Find out, find out, take the time, you know? And I think it's, it's such a lazy thing to do just to, to be one way and to hope, Hey, out of the 10 people I talk to, maybe I'm going to hit one of them. The other ones, you know, there's, oh, well, you know, that just doesn't work that way anymore. Especially now when people are more in touch with themselves and their feelings uh, and, and, and also with the quarantine and everything that's been going on, people are just in different positions right now. You really need to take that time. 
we often go to strategy before we go to alignment. We often assume rapport, right? Mm-hmm. And, and that's something I think it's a, it's a big mistake that we make all the time. And it's something that we do, unfortunately, with the people that we love or spend the most time with. Yeah, yeah, that is absolutely true. And I think that, you know, I think this year, especially, I mean, I watch patterns because that's my business. I'm looking for patterns in behavior with every yes. organization that I work with. And in the last two years, I've been observing these patterns. And this year, I can tell you now, is the year of consequence. Mm. Because if you spent the last two years supporting your sales team and developing them, and this year, you're in you have stability you have people that want to stay you'll have people that have been developed over the last two years so they're more likely to get higher sales and better quality sales now if you've had your head down in the last two years and you have left people to their own devices haven't checked in on them enough not just about work but how are you how are you really You know, what do you need to be in the best possible shape mentally and physically and emotionally? If you've not done any of that, I can tell you now, and you probably are experiencing it already, that your talent has either left or thinking of leaving. Mm. You are going to be training people to fill in but it's going to take you longer to get off the ground. The people that have left because you haven't necessarily supported them in the best way, and that might not be because you didn't want to. It may be because you were distracted with other things and the company caused you to be distracted and you didn't prioritise it over maybe what the company wanted. So this isn't about beating yourself up with a stick. It's too late for that now. But you have to be aware that this year sales leaders and companies in particular will pay the consequences for how they have behaved in the last two years. It is so true. Uh, And and you said they've either left or they're thinking of leaving, you know, and and you better hope that they left already because if they're thinking of leaving, they're just checked out already and they're costing you a lot of money. You know, it's, you hear it all the time. Even, even those who rolled, even those who rolled into this this quarantine and, and um, you know this last couple of years, those who invested in their salespeople had a lot more success because when their salespeople went, you know, remote, they they had already had culture, they had already had training, they had great onboarding, they were prepared, and and, and I think you're you're seeing that now as these people who are filling that leaky bucket with turnover every month, uh, you're you're not going to survive. It, it, there's just too many people out there offering great jobs. There's too many people making the switch to invest in their employees. Uh, it, it's, it's, you're right. The year of consequence. I like that. Lee. It's a year of consequence, but you know, if you are in that position, at least start now, start now to create that culture of growth mindset to cook, to be a compassionate leader, to be a leader that cares for every single person in their team. And this isn't about doing extra. It's about changing what you're doing already. It won't take any more time. It's a shift in your mindset that's required so that you're doing, you're prioritizing the right things. So don't think that If you are in that position, oh, man, I need to look for another job. Maybe you do and maybe you don't. But even you starting a new job in a new organization, you will still be heading into instability. Mm -hmm. So wherever you go in this place or in somewhere new, you're still going to have to do it. Absolutely. And and, and yeah, and and this isn't changing. This isn't like a new fad or a trend. This is a a shift of philosophy and, and it's foundational. And, and, and it's and it's intuitive to when it's not happening, um, and, and and it'll burn you even more if you pretend to do it and don't do it. I, I mean that that is the that is the worst thing you can do. And so I love what you said. This is not about right or wrong. You're you're a business person. You're a sales leader. You did it with proper intent what you thought was best. And now we're understanding that there are better ways. And I, and I, Lee, we we always approach this. You said when I wrote this book, I'm already doing new things. Why? Because we're curious. 
We know that what we know is is our truth now, but that truth will evolve the more information, the more patterns we we observe, and the more people that we get to support. Um, so I, I really uh, I really love that concept. Now, are you using this uh, the book for for a workbook? Are you are you is it a part of your coaching and teaching process now? Well, I, mean, I would imagine my- I would. I'd imagine I get every one of your people in these books. It's, 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 it's that good of support, especially after you're done doing a workshop, right? Because yeah, oftentimes yeah. once we go, to, we go to a great event, salespeople out there, you all know what this is like, right? You go to a training event or a, a, a summit or a workshop and you're like, oh man, this guy's getting all these, this person's getting all these great you know, results. She's killing it over there. All I got to do is do that stuff. And then you go home and you're like, wow, that's like a lot harder than I thought. I don't even know where to start. You know, those are good ideas, but I do things this way. And it's just like, how do I make that change? This book seems like a good support to take these ideas and then integrate them on a, on a, on a regular basis. For sure it does, especially, I mean, if I'm doing a leadership program, every leader gets a copy of the book. Yeah, So yeah. they get a copy of the book. Um, the most important thing, if they're in your organization, if you're the only sales leader, Find some another sales leader that can hold you to account um, yes. because, you know, and someone that is, you know, either on the same path or has already trod this path to being a compassionate leader mm. who is focused on developing their people. Um, so I think the book is a really great uh, tool to support you but it will only support you if you do the actions and the great thing about like you know your training at NASP my training my books it's not there's no one way so in the book I'll share the concept and I say this is how I might do it this is how you might find this you might find that and you go well that that actually worked quite well for me I could do it that way or I like that bit and I like that bit I might try that together it's all about trial and error and I talk about the learning zone in the book and mm-hmm. make mistakes and test things really not to be perfectly oh my goodness um, Lee, I just missed you I can all right, there we are. We're back here. Leah, I had you back. I missed that last thing you said about the learning zone. Okay, so uh, if you're not stepping into your own learning zone and testing things out and things might feel a bit clunky, if you're not doing that and evolving those things to become part of your comfort zone, then you're not doing enough. If you're doing stuff that is comfortable instead of doing stuff that is new, then you're not growing. If you're not growing, you're either stagnant or dying. You know, you only have to look at nature to see that Mm. things are either growing and thriving and some things like die off in the winter, but they're still looking for warmer sunnier weather to pop back up again and that's the same for human beings too and die on the inside if you're in a job that is unfulfilling but you know put you in new soil and you will flourish again (laughs) so you know even people that have never ever stepped out of their comfort zone for a really long time who are experts in their field and have lost that curiosity it's still there. All you have to do is kindle it. It's like the embers of the flame. It, they, those embers never go out. You just blow on it and it just ignites again. I love that. I, I absolutely love that. And you, you said something earlier too. You said, um, the tied in with what you just said, you said something about um, people get caught up in their identity or they get caught up in this identity or this image of themselves. And then you said, create that safe place for practice, for 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 uh, for trial and error, for trying new things, and I think this is our often our problem is that we have this image of ourselves and and that failure or that practice of something that doesn't succeed fractures that identity of ourselves. When in actuality, it's the trying and not knowing if you're going to be successful or not that your ability to face uncertainty, which is your directly related to your ability to growth. So, 
it, it's counterproductive, but it makes sense. And I think what what I love to teach too, Lee, is is giving people a fun way to practice, right? Taking the pressure off. You don't have to try something that's detrimental to your career. Try taking a risk, a small little risk, some easy ones that you don't mind building those references on. Yeah, that's right. And and everything that you do, uh, the other thing that's always important to remember, Chris, is that you haven't got to have confidence for the whole journey. So if there's a really big thing, yes. say, for example, you you're, you don't really coach. Um, no one's ever trained you to be a, a coach for your sales team. And before you start reading any books, you think, oh, this is too hard. I'm just going to tell them so they just get on with it. And really, you're just you're just making it more painful both sides. And it's going to just it will never fix because the more you tell your team what to do, the less they think for themselves. And they will always be asking you and they will always take more mm -hmm. of your time than than needs to be. So. You don't need to have the confidence to become a coach. Just start asking one question. So mm. when they come to you and say, hey, boss, I'm not quite sure how to do this. What do you think I should do? You just practice with, well, I've got some ideas, but what do you think? And then you just pick one question and you practice that. And first it will feel a little bit alien, but if you practice it at home in the mirror a few times or on your phone, you'll get used to it. And the first time you say it and you stop yourself from answering it yourself and they go, well, I think I should do X. And you go, yeah, that sounds like a plan. Go, you know, let me know how you get on. And when they walk away, not only do they feel really good, but you go, wow, I did it. I did it. And it's easy. And they've gone off. They knew all along. It's so great. And it's so true. It's, it's as a manager, we're like, no, I'd rather save the time. It's, it's short sighted versus long term investment, right? Because short sighted, let me fix it. It's done and done. But the long term investment is you create somebody who's sustainable and will grow on their own and doesn't require your motivation. Not to mention, they're going to feel ownership and pride in the things that they're doing because they're the ones that made choices. And, and, and you're giving them the, the, the opportunity to choose. Like, and that is the power. That is, we don't, we take it so much for granted. Um, but choosing is, is, is our freedom. Having the ability to choose is what gives us our freedom. And so it is scary sometimes because of the consequences. But like you said, if you are doing a good job as a manager and you create a good learning zone and a safe place and give people the opportunity to do so and fall and learn from those falls, then, then now you're creating an environment where status quo is no longer anything. You're disrupting industries, that you're disrupting systems and, and, and processes and creating new, better ways to do things. And I, I, just, I just absolutely love that. It, it's uh, the learning zone. And so, yeah, the learning zone, and 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 I also call it the growth zone. Sometimes you can't grow in any other zone than in that zone, and 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 I guess the thing to remember with anyone or team when you nudge them into the learning zone is you're not asking them to climb Everest because that would be too terrifying. In the same way that you wouldn't say to your child of three or four who wants to learn how to ride a bike well I'll get you a bike and I'm not going to put stabilizers on so that you learn faster you know you you if you know that person we talked about maps of the world if you know that person you go well I think that person could do that so let's I think that's a manageable step for them even though they might not believe it themselves because if you push them too far, they end up in the terror zone and then they're paralyzed. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what you say to them afterwards, they're still paralyzed. So you've got to get them back into neutral before they can do anything. So that's Absolutely. Much better. You know, knowing map of the world will allow you to know, I think I can nudge that person, that kind of nudge or that kind of nudge. Yeah. <laughs> get out there. Yeah, and that's and listen, inch by inch, everything is a cinch, right? I think you're all, you're right. Don't look at the what you said. Uh, don't you don't have to have the courage or strength for the whole journey, but just just for the first couple steps, right? And 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 those first steps build more references, build more courage, build more confidence, and then those next steps are even easier. But you're right. We often get to, yeah, but I don't know how I'm going to be able to do this thing three months down the road. Well, don't worry about that. Do do the things today, and and that'll be a different story by the time you get there. And you talk about that too. It's called um. 
TFAR or what, what is oh, it? TFAR. Uh, TFAR. 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 Yes. And so we have our, our belief model. Your, your, your beliefs determine your capability. Your capability determines the strategies you choose and the strategies you choose determine your results. And so oh, tell me about. That's exactly the same. Isn't I don't know. It? It, it is so beautiful. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So, yes. so TFAR, your thoughts create your feelings that then create the actions that you take that then give you the results that you get. Now, the reason that I chose that model is because people don't often know what their thoughts are because they're mm. unconscious. You mentioned subconscious. So if I say if someone's avoiding a particular activity, so say it's a leader who's avoiding um, the tough love conversation, I'll say, how do you feel just before you have that kind of conversation or you know that you have to have that conversation? And they'll say things like, oh, I feel sick. I, you know, I've got a knot in my stomach. I feel dread. But if I ask them, what are your thoughts just before? They may not even realize because the mm -hmm. feeling is so overwhelming. So if you tap into your feeling, if you have any kind of negative feeling or emotion, there's no point in in actually doing the action. 100%. So I say when you feel that negative emotion or feeling, take a couple of deep breaths and ask yourself, what's the thought? What could it be? You haven't even got to be exactly right. So it might that, that you know, the leader might say to me, well, I don't really want to do this. Why can't they just fix it themselves? And I will say, well, that's one perspective. You know, this is a conversation and you're standing here and you're thinking about the conversation and that's your perspective that you've chosen. But there are 360 different Ooh. other positions you could stand in. And then I say, come up with half a dozen. Uh, do you have half a dozen in the US? Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Oh, yeah. Six, oh, yeah, we'll get that. Yeah, six. <laughs> so come up with five or six uh, alternative thoughts. So it could be the first one was, I don't want to do this. Why can't they fix it themselves? Well, if I don't tell them, they're going to continue to do it. Mm. If I, when I do this and support them with their first step, they're going to feel more motivated mm -hmm. to get it right the next time. Yeah. Every time I do this, it becomes easier and easier. Every time I do this, my team becomes stronger. You know, so I get them to come up with five or six, and then I say, which one resonates with you most? And they might say, well, every time I do this, my team gets stronger, resonates with the most. And when you say that to yourself, what feeling do you get in your body? And they go, I feel really hopeful. I feel I could actually do this. I say, now you can have the tough love uh, conversation. Absolutely. I love that. So many things come to mind. Well, Einstein said you can't solve the same problem with the, with the or you can't solve the problem with the same mind you created it, uh, the same state of mind. Um, and, then, and then also, um, you know, just the law of belief. You know, what, 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 the law of focus, we call it. You know, what you focus on, you find. What you focus on grows. What you focus on seems real. And eventually what you focus on, you become. And so when you shift your focus on the outcome that you don't want to the outcome that you want, yeah. the, the only thing true in that moment is the one that you're thinking. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and we it's, tell each other so many, we tell ourselves so many stories. Yes. Yes. And that's what I, that's what I heard when you said maps, when I read the maps, I'm like, Yes, that's the story that we tell ourselves. And that story is based on all the hurts and the pains and the goods and the bads and everything that we've ever gone through. And that story determines how I feel about this, you, that, everything. It, it is that decipher for those things. And I think you, like you said, getting people to see another perspective. And how do you find another perspective? You ask questions. And you put so many great questions in your book for people to ask themselves. And then y'all, questions are great, but make sure you take the time to answer them. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, yeah. it's a great question, but if you just run through, you don't really take the time and we don't want to hear our, our limiting beliefs because we're ashamed of them. We feel guilt around them. I go to work every day and I don't believe this is a good place for me to work. Well, you're going to have a real shit time at work. That's for sure. Yeah, that's and, right. And change your belief and you can change your beliefs. And I think that's the, uh, we talked about it before, choosing the belief that you want. Is it easy just to change one? No, it takes some time and it takes some practice, but it's still your choice. 
Yeah, yeah, and you know, some actually are very easy to change. You know, I see when you're in a training room, for example, or on a virtual call, you'll say something, and you see that some like a penny drop in somebody's mind, and you can see that you've lost them for a few minutes while they're yeah. processing, and then they go at the end. Oh my God, I never thought of it like that. And um, so sometimes you can change them like that. Mm. But also know this you've been creating and changing beliefs all your life. Every single one of us does. And so we create. M- most of it's reactively, unfortunately, them. though. Most of our changing is reactively as opposed to proactively. And I think that's kind of the big difference here. Yeah, but it's not, maybe not always reactive. No, it, you're I right. I do agree is mostly, you know, you could read a book and it could yeah. change something. But 100%. always remember that you've got really great beliefs inside you too. Yeah. So, so, you know, celebrating your great beliefs that have got you this far in life is also really well worth doing. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's like knowing the difference. And the more you get to know yourself, the more you hold the mirror up and observe yourself. And I talk about that in the book about second positioning yourself. Mm -hmm. That may not have been one of the chapters you read, but the more you develop the skill to observe yourself in the moment or reflect after a conversation, think, what could I have done differently? What bits were really good? What bits would Mm. I change, especially for this person next time? It's, Look, doing that, eventually you'll be able to say something at a meeting and think, oh, and you'll stop yourself and go, hold on one second. I'm going to just change that question. And you will do it in the moment. I mean, you're nodding your head because you know what I'm talking about. You'll ask a question. You'll go, no, no, (laughs) hold on one second. I'm going to ask you a better question. It's like a pendulum, you know, it swings and you're, 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 you're realizing these things maybe a day later or maybe hours later, then maybe minutes later. And then you're catching yourself in mid thought and in mid, you know what, you know, I'm going to save that one. Let me structure that one a different way, but it, yeah. it, it is, it is beautiful. And, and Anthony DeMello says it beautifully. He says, uh, what you're, what you're aware of, you can change what you're unaware of changes you and oh i love that isn't that is that that book awareness I yes love that yes book. I such love a that great book. book oh it's so great and, but it, it, it's so true we, we just the idea of awareness is is what necess is what is necessity for change when you're unaware of it it is defining you it's ruling your decisions in different ways it's it's choosing your perspective and i think um, your book does a really good job of bringing people through to ask questions, providing them awareness, but also not telling them where to go not telling them what to do, but giving them the opportunity to answer themselves or ask them the questions and take choice for themselves. Um, and, and, and you do a very good job of that. And you're, as you teach them Thank you. to do it, you're doing a very good job doing it. So uh, as Russell Brunson takes you through his, uh, his click funnels and he's taking you through the click funnel as he's showing you how to do click funnels. You're like, Oh my goodness. So I felt the same thing with your book here, Lee. Oh, bless you. Thank you yeah. so much. Chris. I'm really, I mean, I've had some wonderful feedback and, and I won't, I, I threw a wild card chapter in there. Okay. Chapter 10. And I cannot tell you, I had a little bit, not a, um, well, I wouldn't say a <laughs> tussle with the editor, but they wanted to change the title of the chapter. And I said, no way. I'm no sorry. Way. That's, that's yeah, um, this non-negotiable, I said. That is the chapter. It's chapter 10, and the chapter is called Sales and Spirituality. Ooh. And I said, because that's, I said, because that is probably going to be my next book. And I kid you not, Everyone that says, like, gives me p- feedback personally, tells me I love these pages, I love this chapter, and I love this, and I love this, and I loved chapter ten. Oh, uh, that's beautiful. When you when, when you listen to the intuition and you trust and you go yeah. and then you get the response back, that's beautiful. Lee. Yeah, well, you know what? Loves it. It, and and when we've talked about it before, sales and influences. sales has a dirty name and a dirty image, but that's transforming very rapidly now. And, and I think, um, you know, you realize that 
influences everywhere. And, and that these skills that, that we go to work on ourselves with to communicate with others, which is sales, are, are, are carried with us in every relationship that we go, um, in our, our family relationships and our, our, our children, our father and son relationships. Every relationship I have is better because of how I bettered myself as a salesperson. And I think that that's... You know, that's gorgeous. Chris, that is just gorgeous. And you know what that says to me, which is everything I believe about fundamentally about every human being you can influence with a positive intention or you can influence with a negative intention Absolutely. influence with a positive intention is the most powerful thing on the planet because Absolutely. it comes from a place of love it comes from your heart so you know if you have if you feel like that about your clients you're going to make sure that they get exactly the right product or service if Absolutely. you're looking after your team you're going to make sure you do the right thing for every single person on your team when you go home at night you'll do the same behaviors with your family or friends or neighbors or what if you have positive intention in your heart and you use your skills and expertise to good intent then if everything and anything is possible I love it Lee you're so amazing I could talk to you all day we got to find more ways to do stuff together Lee uh, so for all y'all don't know, follow Lee on LinkedIn. The links will be in the in the post here. Uh, we'll put the link for the for the book in the post as well. And uh, Lee, the name of the book again, one more time. It is. There we grow go. Grow your people. Grow your sales. <laughs> I love it. Y'all can get that on Amazon. Um, you can follow Lee on LinkedIn or where else, Lee? Where else can they find you? LinkedIn's the best place. I'm also yeah. on Twitter. Um, but they're the two places, really. And my website, sales-consultancy.com. Absolutely. And y'all can catch some blogs from Lee on our on our NASP blog as well. Uh, Lee, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for, for going through the energy and effort to write this book and bring it to the world. It's, 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 it was needed. And I'm sure there's a lot of people in the world that are going to have uh, transformation in their lives because of it. So um, oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you. Absolutely. Love you. All right, y'all. Love, love you too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being here, y'all. Make sure you go down there and click all those stars down there and give us a good rating and uh, like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next Leads to Growth podcast, y'all. Thank you. Bye.